What I want to do in this video is present what's called the Samuelson condition, also known as the bowen lindahl samuelson conditions. Uh, the presentation I'm going to give here is adapted from LaFont's book, Fundamentals of Public Economics. We have four main variables that we need to keep in, into, in mind. Uh, the first is X, uh, private goods. Y is a public good, and I'll explain more below what I mean by public good. W is aggregate wealth. And then Z is the choice about how much of that aggregate wealth to dedicate towards the production of public goods. We're going to assume that there's a social welfare function, which is a weighted function of the utility of all of the individuals uh, I, where each individual has utility UI, which is a function of XI and the public good Y. And they're given the welfare weight alpha I. Uh, the the economy is constrained by the fact that you need to dedicate resources Z in order to pr produce the public good Y. And the aggregate wealth constraint is defined by the equation W minus Z, that is total wealth minus whatever you take away for the provision of the public good has got to be greater than or equal to the sum of the X's uh, across all of the individuals. The Planner's Lagrangian, therefore, is uh, the expression below where we simply have uh, the uh, objective function alpha I, sum over the I, alpha I UI. We've got the constraint uh, for the wealth constraint, and we've got the constraint for the production uh, function. We can now specify the first order conditions that define the optimum. Uh, the first uh, with respect to Xi. We get alpha i dui dxi for lambda. Notice that that's true for each of the um, i. So if you had, for example, a thousand uh, individuals in the economy, each of those uh, individuals would have this. Uh, this equality would be satisfied for each of the um, individuals, but the lambda on the right-hand side would be the same. The second is the con uh, first order condition for the public good y. And now we have only one of those, because there's only one public good. Uh, so the left side is the sum of i du i dy, and the right hand side is mu, or uh, the shadow price on the technology constraint. The third first order condition is with respect to z, and it simply says that mu, mu g prime is equal to lambda. So that ties together the first order conditions with respect to xi and y. We now use the first order conditions with respect to fi, xi, and y, and uh, and to come up with some important relationships. The first thing we do is we use the third of the first order conditions that mu g prime is equal to lambda. That gives us the the first and uh, the first term on the left hand side of the equation and the middle part of the of the the first equation there. Uh, but we've substituted in for mu using the first order condition with respect to y, that is the sum over the i alpha i du i dy. We then, on the last part of that equality, we have the left hand side of the first order condition with respect to x, that is alpha i du i dxi. Using the first and middle part of the equality, then we're going to divide everything through by lambda on the left hand side and divide the right hand side by g prime. That gives us this equality here. So let's look at this very closely. We have the sum over the i alpha i du i dy. We're going to write that out. So we got alpha 1 du 1 dy, alpha 2 du 2 dy, etc., etc. And each of those is divided by lambda. And remember that lambda is the same for all of the individuals. The right hand side is 1 over g prime. That is 1 over the cost of, uh, in terms of, of, uh, of uh, what it takes to get a marginal unit of the public good. Now, Let's remember that lambda is equal to alpha i du i dxi from the first order condition with respect to xi. And so we're going to substitute in a different alpha a different alpha i u i dxi for each of the i. So for 1, we're going to substitute in alpha 1 du 1 dx1. In the second term, we're going to substitute in alpha 2 du 2 dx2, etc., etc. What this means is that we can actually cancel all of those alphas. 
the alpha 1's cancel in the first term, the alpha 2's cancel in the third ter second term, and so on and so forth. So we're left with a simple relationship that the sum over the i dui dy over dui dxi is equal to 1 over g prime. You'll recognize immediately that dui dy over dui dxi is the marginal rate of substitution between uh, the public good and the private good for individual i. What's different about this relation, this uh, this equation, however, is that it's not just one individual for which the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the marginal rate of transformation. It's the sum. du i dy uh, for all of the i's, sum that all up, and that must equal to the marginal rate of some transformation. And that's very different than the, uh, the optimum condition for a private good, which is simple that the marginal rate of substitution for each individual must be equal to the marginal rate of transformation. For, for the private good, it's for one individual. For a public good, it's summed across all individuals. Another thing that's important to note about this um, equation is if you think about the denominator of the equation allows us to think of the entire ratio as expressed in units of the denominator. But the denominator is the marginal utility of xi, the marginal utility of that numerator good. So the, the, the total relationship is tells us what would you be willing to pay in terms of that numerator good. And if the numerator good is dollars, that dui dy over dui dx is essentially the marginal willingness to pay for the public good. And so the sum of the marginal willingness to pay for the public good must be equal to the marginal rate of transformation. That is, the, what we have to give up in terms of the numerator good, in terms of wealth, in order to get that um, good from society as a whole. So the sum of the willingness to pay for the public good is equal to the total, the marginal cost of providing that public good. And when you've got lots of people in the population, that sum may be a very large number. A related concept is what we call Lindahl prices. And the Lindahl prices is simply a, a very abstract conceptual way of thinking about the optimal level of public goods. So imagine that you have personal prices, PI, for the public good, so that the individual's utility maximization problem is to maximize their utility over the choices X, I, and Y subject to the constraint that their total wealth, the individual's total wealth, that WI, must be greater than or equal to their consumption of XI and the public good in which, which they have to pay for at the price PI. This is a very familiar problem that you've solved many times, and we, we know that the, the solution of that would yield the first order condition that DUI DY over DUI DXI is equal to PI. Now imagine that the, uh, the public good is provided by a competitive firm that is also price taking. And the, the firm basically creates a unit of Y and then gets to take PI from all of the I individuals in the economy. So the, the firm's total revenue is PI, the sum over I, PI times Y. It has to pay the cost of producing that good, G of Z is equal to Y. Um, so that z is equal to um, the inverse of the g function with respect to y. Since the firm is a price taker, it's going to be setting its marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost, where the marginal revenue is the derivative of the sum of its revenue, d, uh, uh, sum of the, uh, the revenue that it gets across all of the individuals with respect to y, which is simply equal to the sum of the pi's, and the marginal cost is given there. So at the optimum, the sum of the PIs must equal to G prime, or the firm will supply up to the point where the marginal rate of trans transformation, 1 over G prime, is equal to the sum of the marginal rate of substitution for all of the individuals. That's the socially, social optimum, uh, which is what we wanted to achieve. So if we were somehow able to get uh, these Lindahl prices to be used in the economy, we would achieve the social optimum.